Hi, I'm Ray Kurzweil. It's great to be with you. Uh, I'm a inventor, author. Some people accuse me of being a futurist. I recently joined Google, where I have the title uh, Director of Engineering. And we have a great panel to talk about this movie, After Earth, which is coming out this summer. I uh, think the uh, trailer, which I suggest you look at, is uh, very exciting. Looks like great entertainment, but it raises some very profound issues, which we hope to talk about today. And I'd like to just briefly introduce our illustrious panel. Uh, Will, you and I were last together on December 31st, 1999, at yeah. the Millennium Eve celebration at the White House. Yeah, absolutely. That. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was a fun time. And uh, Will needs no introduction. Uh, as I've described this event to people, he's, people say, oh, wow, he's the best-loved actor and entertainer in the world. So <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. And uh, Jaden, you look a lot like your father. Thank I you. guess this is your second... <laughs> your second movie, uh, starring with your father as a father and son mm -hmm. duo, uh, Pursuit of Happiness, was a great success, and uh, you also did a great job in Karate Kid, so I think we'll be seeing and hearing a lot more of you, Jaden, in the oh. years ahead. Oh, thanks, uh, we have several other <laughs> illustrious uh, thinkers, uh, Elon Musk, who I've uh, worked with on projects like Singularity University, uh, has actually two relevant uh, connections to this discussion. Uh, your founder of SpaceX, which is leading the effort to privatize space, working with NASA, and you've had some very successful launches just recently, which were historic. And Tesla is uh, also leading the way in terms of preserving our environment uh, with a zero emission car that's uh, the most successful all electric vehicle. And uh, if you go into Tesla car, I feel like you're going into space. It's a very uh, <laughs> high-performing car. Uh, Alexandra Custo is the third generation of the legendary Custo family, granddaughter of Jacques-Yves Custo, uh, daughter of Philippe Custo, uh, and you've been continuing your family's efforts to explore, understand, and preserve uh, the oceans, which is really most of the Earth. Uh, we're called the Blue Planet for a good reason, and we'll, I'll be interested to hear your perspective on how we're doing with that. Uh, and we have a middle school from Culver City, uh, California, and uh, we're very interested in getting your perspective on how we're doing with the Earth and whether you're anxious to leave the Earth. Uh, I guess it might depend on what day we talk to you. Um, but. We're looking forward to getting your ideas. So, Will, let me start with you. Uh, obviously, one <coughs> goal of the movie is to entertain people. Uh, judging by the trailer, it looks like it does a great job of that. Uh, but it also touches on other themes, because people have left the Earth because of an environmental disaster. There is a lot of concern today that we might be headed for that kind of scenario. So, what did the movie mean to you? What are some of the themes you think it raises? Well, uh, well, thank you. Well, first of all, I want I want to say uh, thank you to you. You you have uh, been behind the scenes in in my career for many many years. Uh, the the age of spiritual machines is uh, the, the beside my bed during uh, I Robot and, and the I Am Legend. So I want to thank you for all of your hard work. You make me look good. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is uh, with, with this film. It was such a uh, uh, perfect uh, uh, collision of uh, art, entertainment, uh, education, uh, uh, a uh, an opposing of, of fantastic uh, questions. You know, that, uh, as an artist, the, this film does exactly what I've always dream to be able to do, to be able to entertain and to also pose very interesting questions. Um, and to do it with my son, it was, it was wonderful for, for the two of us to become uh, environmentally educated to, together. We, we did a lot of the shooting in uh, Costa Rica, which is one of the most beautiful 
uh, places on Earth. And then one of the, you know, one of the questions that was uh, posed during the, 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 the shooting was about what would the actual damage that was being done by, you know, human uh, occupation of the planet. We started huge questions of uh, water came up and, you know, the, the idea that, you know, today it's oil uh, that, you know, we're willing to go to war over and at some point in the future it's going to be water. Um, you know, so, the, you know, there were uh, you know, huge, huge questions that were, were posed and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to be here. <laughs> well, let me, how do you think we're doing uh, in terms of the environment? I mean, there is a lot of concern that that's going to be the only destiny left to humanity is to actually leave this planet, which is the scenario that the movie portrays. Mm -hmm. uh, are you pessimistic, optimistic? Do you think it's in our hands? We can go either way? Or what, what is your view on that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I really <laughs> believe that it, it is going to be a very uh, serious concern that we are, we're going to need to, to uh, focus on. Um, again, being in Costa Rica and, and sitting and speaking to uh, some of the elders of Costa Rica who had seen the changes in the weather patterns over the, even just the last 60 or uh, 70 years. I, I, I truly believe the, the exploration of space is an absolute uh, necessity. I, I was, uh, you know, truly concerned <coughs> In the in the past few years of the, the U.S. situation with with NASA and uh, you know I just I, I think that it's something we're going to need to take very seriously and and we look at it in our film from an entertainment standpoint but I think it's something that the world needs to take very very seriously. So, so Jaden, uh, you probably resist being a spokesperson for your generation. <laughs> I don't like the way people expect me to be a spokesperson for my generation, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we do have some other, we have some eighth graders with us as well, we'll hear from them, but uh, from your perspective, how does your generation feel about how we're doing with the environment? Uh, are they pessimistic? Do they think that we can overcome these challenges? Uh, I mean, this is a theme that the movie portrays. Mm -hmm. I mean, our world is going to get to a tipping point, and... I don't think that we've reached that tipping point yet, and I feel like if we wanted to stop that, then my generation would have to almost become obsessed with it and, and say, you know what, we're stopping everything that we're doing wrong right now. No more plastic, only reusable sources, and, and only solar power, but, you know, it's really something that we're going to have to work on, but I really feel like my generation can get used to, you know, paper bottles and just renewable things easier than somebody that has been living in this world for so long and, it, and is used to the standard things and you know I think my generation will, will take it very seriously and know that tap water doesn't kill you you can drink <laughs> tap water you know you can use a bottle over and over again you know what I'm saying like it, even in our house we have glass bottles that we just use over and over and over again and I really think that our, my generation can really, really be serious about this environmental thing because if not, we are the ones that are going to be suffering from the consequences. Because I, I, you're, I really you're, you're, no, it's okay. You brought up a great point about you brought up a great point about tipping point because mm -hmm. uh, that's actually the concern. That things are getting gradually worse, but we might get to a point where suddenly things get drastically worse quickly. Like if you bend a stick, it can bend, and then suddenly it snaps. That's a worry. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that. I'll, I'll share my views on how we're doing and what I think a strategy could be for addressing this problem in a moment. But, Elon, you, as I mentioned, you have two connections uh, to this issue. Uh, let's start with space. Do you see space as something, a, a venture for us to learn more about the Earth and as a contribution to science? After all, in the original space flights, uh, the computer chip was perfected, so that was one fallout of the space program. Or do you see this as a kind of vanguard for where eventually some human beings could actually leave the Earth and that that's going to be a 
survival strategy for humanity? Well, I, I think it's <clears throat> I think it's all of those things. The um, I think we, we want to be a, a spacefaring civilization. I mean, history is going to fundamentally bifurcate in two directions: either we're a spacefaring civilization, or we're uh, going to be bound to Earth until some eventual extinction event. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly optimistic about the near-term situation on Earth, um, without suggesting that we be complacent. Um, but I, but I think a future where we are a space-faring civilization out there exploring the stars on multiple planets is a very exciting one, an inspiring one, and certainly one which uh, ensures that the survival of humanity is the probability is much greater. Um, so that, that's why I'm, I'm in favor of that. I mean, when we do explore space uh, and go to far distant. Uh, stars, systems, and so on. Do we need to send you biological humans, big, soft, squishy creatures, or can we just send small computers? And well, robots? I think we, I think we want to send humans. I don't know. I mean, if you know, I think we, we, we will send robots, but I think we want to send people too. Um, and there's some potential for, um, even though it, it does sound science fiction, e uh, for for warp drive to work and to, to be able to travel fast. Well, well technically. To, to warp space such that you're traveling at the speed of light, but the but you've warped space so that that, that space is actually traveling. Do, do you know what I'm referring to? Yeah. Uh, or we could actually go through other dimensions and places that are, seem to be far away could actually be closer through another dimension. Yeah, I'm less optimistic about that one. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But let me go. Let me move to you, Alexandra. Uh, you're the third generation of a pioneering family seeking to preserve and understand and explore the oceans, uh, which is actually most of the Earth. So, how how are you? How do you think we're doing? Uh, are you uh, optimistic? Are you upset with what's happening to the oceans? Uh, well, um, I would have to say that I'm a little bit of both, right? To be perfectly honest. I um I am upset about what's happening here on Earth. There's there's we're on the knife's edge of either protecting this place that we live or or losing an enormous amount of it. But I have to say I completely agree with Jaden in that this generation has an extraordinary opportunity to use technology that we've never had before, knowledge that we've never had before, and opportunities that we've never had before to actually take control of our use of resources at home, in our communities, to steward and protect our forests and our waters and all these places that provide us with the quality of our life and the quality of our health. And I, I think if, if this generation can't do it, then I will become much more pessimistic. But I actually believe that between the enthusiasm and passion of our youth and the technology and, and amazing innovation that we've had just in the past five years, we can go a long way to saving this world. Let me just share some of my perspective. Uh, I agree with a lot of the comments. Jaden had some great uh, practical suggestions on how we can preserve our environment today. Uh, I agree with your comments, El Elon and uh, Alexandra. I am also up, uh, take optimism from recent developments. Uh, Larry Page, my new boss, and I were asked by the National Academy of Engineering a few years ago to study all the emerging energy technologies and come up with a plan for the United States. And uh, we selected solar as being the most promising emerging technology because we're applying advanced technologies, <laughs> nanotechnology, to bring down the cost of solar. So the cost of solar panels uh, is coming down very quickly. As a result, the total amount of solar energy in the world is on a rise. It's on an exponential rise. It's doubling every two years, and it's been doing that for 30 years. So right now, it's a little over 1%. So people say, oh, 1%, it's a fringe player, nice thing to do, but 1%, it's not really going to solve the problem, ignoring the fact that 1% is only seven doublings from 100%. And people dismiss the Genome Project when it was 1%, ignoring <coughs> the fact that it was growing exponentially. Uh, within 15 years, we could meet all of our energy needs with solar. Solar is actually cost comparative uh, with other forms of energy like fossil fuels without any subsidies in different regions of the world. And that's, and that's as the costs come down some more, uh, it'll actually be less expensive. Uh, and 
uh, so I presented this actually to the Prime Minister of Israel recently, and he said, but Ray, do we have enough sunlight to do this with? And I uh -huh. said, yes, we have 10,000 <laughs> 10, times more than we need. And after we double seven more times, and are meeting all of our energy yep. needs through solar, we'll be using one part in 10,000 of the sunlight. And it's free. Ultimately, can, this can be very inexpensive. It has no environmental impact. There are similar issues actually in cleaning up water, uh, similar solutions that are emerging, uh, similar solutions emerging for food production, housing. It's a complex subject, but you know, if we restrict ourselves to 19th century technologies like fossil fuels, then I would be pessimistic also. If we embrace these new strategies and new technologies, which are environmentally friendly, they're decentralized, they're not subject to <coughs> disasters like uh, oil spills, uh, then I would be very optimistic. We have actually the, the means and the knowledge uh, to meet our you know, biological and material needs in an environmentally friendly way. We just have to make the decision to do that. Let me, uh, let me move to Culver City. Mm -hmm. uh, do you kids have a question or a comment? Uh, we'd like to hear what your generation thinks. Well, we definitely agree with what Jaden said earlier. We know that we have to like we have to continue we have to continue what is helping our earth and we definitely have to keep using the re reusable things and um it's really we really have to do it and start acting now because we have to we have to make sure that our future generations aren't in trouble like we are right now. Well, I think that's good advice. Uh, do you have a, a question uh, for the other panelists? Uh, yeah. Um, after you were done shooting the film, how has your view of Planet Earth changed? For Jaden. Well, um, I feel like I really saw some true beauty in the world after shooting in Costa Rica, you know, and in Eureka, and how different it is. And it really, after that experience, it really showed me how important it is to save our world and how I want planet Earth to be around for a very, very long time. And I, I want to treat it well because it is, it, it, it is the giving tree. It, it gives us food, water, mm -hmm. air, living, everything. And it's just time for us to give back to it and not throw plastic bottles mm -hmm. in the ocean and make an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean of just plastic and, mm -hmm. and just disgustingness and killing fish and, mm -hmm. and poisoning lakes and, mm -hmm. and it's it's time to give back to it and really just appreciate how much the world gives to us. Everything here mm -hmm. was made by humans but we took it from the world to make everything that we have and we praise ourselves like, oh look what we did. Mm -hmm. But really it was the world that gave it to us. So I really that's what that's what showed me how important it is for us to really, really take care of our world. How about you, Will? Uh, how did your perspective change from uh, yeah. shooting this movie? Yeah, it was, it was uh, you know, as Jaden said, we were in some of the most beautiful places on Earth, uh, the Redwood Forest. Um, we shot uh, Moab, Utah, uh, and uh, Costa Rica. So, you know, for me, um, I, I grew up, in uh, a different kind of jungle. I grew up in a concrete jungle, you know, so I, I, I grew up in, uh, in inner city Philadelphia. So um, it was, you know, even something like, you know, having my shoes off is something that I started to experience more beyond my, my 30s. You know, I grew up with the idea that, you know, concrete was 80% of the the environment so so this this, this opportunity uh was was a, a huge eye-opener for me and even even you know, I, I wouldn't say that there, there was a disrespect but there was a lack of understanding you know i didn't realize how delicate the the a tree or an environment or the the uh, an ecosystem, even, you know, something that in the film industry we've been talking about is uh, the footprint of your movie. When you take a movie into a space, you're, you're taking, uh, you're bringing food and you're bringing trailers and you're bringing generators and all of that. And just really in the last uh, five or six years, has that even come on 
my radar or something. It's like, oh, wow, yes, you are bringing an organism into a delicate environment. A movie company is an organism. So uh, I've become, become very aware of the movements of the, the, the things that, that I create and the, the companies that I'm involved with. Uh, create in in the earth, and I I, I want to thank uh, Jaden because it, it's absolutely not something that I grew up with or or was aware of. So so let me ask you a different question. Uh, in the movie, you come back to Earth mm -hmm. a thousand years after this environmental disaster, and you find that it's changed quite a bit, and there's been a lot of evolution. Uh, interestingly, there was recently a study came out that showed there actually has been a lot of biological genetic evolution of humans in the last thousand years. People mm -hmm. thought that we had not changed very much mm -hmm. in the last thousand years, and actually uh, the evidence shows that there has been a surprising amount <coughs> of evolution, biological evolution, in the last thousand years. Mm -hmm. My view, though, is that we're going to change much more dramatically through a different kind of evolution, technological evolution, mm -hmm. rather than biological evolution in the future. Mm -hmm. In my view, uh, 50 years from now, let alone 1,000, we're going to be very different because we're going to merge with machines, you know, already extending our minds with, you know, these little devices we carry around. Mm -hmm. They'll eventually go inside our bodies and brains, connect our brains to the cloud, make us smarter, and we will you know, evolve very dramatically in a matter of decades uh, rather than centuries. Mm -hmm. um, but what's your view of that uh, in terms of what you think the next 50, 100,000 years would bring, you know, even if we don't leave the Earth? Well, what, what, was, uh, what was really interesting in, uh, you know, Jada and I were discussing this, I, I started uh, in the music industry. And my my first album was released, and there wasn't there weren't even CDs, you know. Right. So um, it wasn't until my third album was released that it was on a CD. So yeah, this I still have my vinyl records. I never, <laughs> you know. So the the explosion um, and the almost uh, devouring of the entertainment. Uh, the way that people take their entertainment by technology was uh, you know, extremely powerful and voracious the way it was just consumed by technology in, in, in a very, very good way. Um, so uh, I'm seeing in, uh, in the Fantastic Voyage was uh, the, discussed the... Uh, the, discuss the idea of how the next phase of that is going, going to be uh, m medicine and the way that technology is moving into the realm of medicine in that, in that, with that same kind of force. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm extremely excited uh, about those possibilities. My, my, uh, my father just had a successful uh, surgery where he had a pacemaker implanted, but his pacemaker is a Bluetooth device. So yeah, your his, father's a cyborg now. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, his, his, his pacemaker is now, it sinks into the telephone system and his doctor can monitor it from his laptop. And I just thought that was the most, um, amazing, powerful, and, you know, maybe a little frightening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that somebody could just pop well, up even, on their laptop. I'm yeah, sorry, even right? this hangout is something that we couldn't have done just, you know, a couple of years ago. And when these things happen, we just take them for granted. Let me wrap up by just asking a question of the eighth graders, mm -hmm. if I can uh, get your attention. Um, <laughs> So what's your view about how we can manage our environmental problems? Do we have to leave the Earth? Is that kind of what you have in the back of, the, of your mind, that gee, if we don't really succeed in cleaning up our planet, we can always leave? Or are you optimistic that we can actually uh, create the kind of world we want here on Earth? I, I definitely um, I have faith in our generation. I do think that we can like help this Earth, and I really... 
I'm for sure that we cannot go to a different planet just in case, like, we waste this planet and go to a different planet. Like, we can't do that. We have to, I think we ha I'm very optimistic that we can save this planet and continue to do the right things. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, people of your generation are going to make a huge difference. There was one 14-year-old kid who actually came up with an early uh, blood test for pancreatic cancer, which is now going to be adopted. So young people have the tools and the knowledge to actually change the world. And I have confidence that you will all do that. So let me thank all the participants, uh, Will Smith and Jaden Smith. Uh, well, Ray, hold on. Jaden had summer. something he wanted to say to uh, Elon Musk. Okay. He just, and, you know, I, 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 I told him that he had to... to, to behave, uh, but he wanted, you can just tell oh, him how I, you feel about Okay, him. I was just going to tell Mr. Musk that the invention of the Tesla is amazing, mm -hmm. and it in is. January of next year, I will be getting a Tesla, because I feel like <laughs> it's the most environmentally safe thing to get, and it's it's simply fly. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say that I want to sound I want to sound intelligent, but it's you fly. It's fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you in one. Thank you. Uh, Elon Musk, uh, Students of Culver City Middle School, Alexandra Custo, uh, thank you very much for your participation. This was a lot of fun. Thank, thank, you, thank you very, very much. Everyone. Thank you guys so much. Awkward. Mm-hmm. Next one. Oh.